Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Vault Fox, and today I'm going to talk to you about the dreaded word con crunch. I am currently con crunching for Katsupon, which is a little over a week from now. Today is February 5th. And I was thinking to myself, what are some of the things that I've learned over the past couple of years doing con crunch? Even whenever we plan out our costumes months in advance, like how I had done with Commander Shepard, I actually started that back in October. Sometimes we just fall out of love with a costume. And now, it's February 5th and the convention is a little over a week away. So I gotta get to it. Number one, you need to sleep, you need to eat, and you need to take a shower. Really, really, really need to shoot for at least six to seven hours of sleep every night. Once you start to get tired, you start to lose focus, you start to make mistakes. Make sure that you're making time to eat. I understand you'll get into a creative groove and you'll realize five hours have gone by and you haven't eaten. If you absolutely have to, set a reminder on your phone to eat every couple of hours. It doesn't have to be a full meal. It can be a little snack, but make sure you've got things on hand that are easy to make. One of my absolute favorite things to make is a cheese and avocado quesadilla, and I actually eat this all the time. Try to have a lot of simple things on hand just so you can grab them in a pinch. Another thing, always make sure you have a bottle of water nearby. And shower when you can. They make for a nice 15 minute little break for you to kind of veg out and reset yourself. Number two, let those around you know that your focus is on cosplay and con crunching. Communication in these types of situations is absolutely essential. Remember, if these people truly understand and love you, they will understand that you need to take some time to focus and get things done. I'm not suggesting neglect here. If they're really missing you or you've been in the cosplay hole for a bit, Enlist them to help or just allow them to come down into your space and just talk while you're crafting. But it is imperative to set up the lines of communication before you go into full con crunch mode, just so everyone around you knows where your focus is at. Number three, enlist some help if you can. Do you have a friend that's really good at patterning garments? Or do you know someone who has a 3D printer and can print out that last minute prop for you? Ask them, as long as they aren't swamped with their own stuff, the worst that they can say is no. Remember, by asking someone else to help you out, you are asking for their time, so you really should compensate them in return. It doesn't have to be full payment for the prop. It could just be something as simple as getting them coffee or getting them dinner at the convention. Just remember that they may say no, and that has no bearing on your relationship, so try not to hold a grudge. They may be swamped themselves. You may not have given them enough time to get it done to their satisfaction, but it never hurts to ask for help. All right, on to the more practical tips for dealing with content. Number four, rain dump every single thing that you need to get done onto a to-do list right now. It doesn't need to be pretty. Just make sure that you're writing down every single minute detail that you need to get done on this costume. I'm talking all the way down to 3D printing, to priming, to painting, even to gathering reference photos. Though you probably should have done that a little bit earlier, there are some people, myself included, that have seen a trailer, decide, holy crap, I have to stop everything. I need to make this costume for a convention the following week. I understand. <laughs> Your brain is now free from having to remember all of the things that you need to do and has all of the brain space to actually do that. This will also allow you to lump all of your errands into one trip so that you can waste less time going out to buy things and more time in your house working on things. This big to-do list also leads into number five, reverse engineer every single task that you've written down, everything. Reverse engineering is simply taking the amount of time a task will take, such as two hours to pattern a garment, and then going back in time to figure out what time you would need to start said task to be done by the time that you want to be done. Say you want a pattern a top and you think that that's going to take you about two hours. You want to be done by 10 o'clock in the morning because you have an appointment. I need to wake up at eight o'clock so that I can be done by 10. The best thing that I can suggest for you to do is to find the top items on your list that are going to take the longest from start to finish. Right now, I'm working on a master sword and a sheath for a friend. They are taking the absolute longest amount of time simply because I had to wait for the 3D prints to finish, um, filler prime, all of the seams. I also have to put on XCC 3D layers and those take about four hours to cure. I still have to sand the prop. I also have to do filler primer again, which requires waiting for that filler primer to dry. And then I also have to paint it. I actually had that taking about 20 hours, but I'm allotting in that time period for every little thing. And you should never be waiting around for things to dry, especially when you're in con crunch mode. Which leads me into the next tip, 
Number six, multitask smarter. When you have multiple things that you need to get done on your plate, make sure that you're doing them in an order that maximizes your time. For example, say that you need to finish a piece of armor and you also need to sew a top. You would first want to take that piece of armor that you finished and Plasti Dip it because Plasti Dip is going to require wait for something to dry. While that Plasti Dip is drying, you can start sewing the top. If you continue to layer tasks in this fashion, you'll really be able to hack your time. Again, you really don't want to be caught waiting for something to dry. You always should be doing something, even if that something is just cleaning your workspace. Which leads into the next tip. Number seven, try as much as you can to clean as you go. Cleaning after every single little task that you do can help you to not break your creative groove later by having to clean up an entire huge mess that I have 100% never made in my life. It will also give you the added benefit of not feeling as chaotic as you really might be feeling in your head. If you can't clean up after every single task, I definitely recommend to at least clean up every night before you're done. It makes a world of difference to walk into a crafting space that is clean and ready for you to work. And finally, number eight, realize when it's time to quit. There will come a time when you're working in ConCrunch that you realize you just do not simply have the time to get something done. You have to remember, quitting is not equal to failure. It's simply understanding your limits. Unless you signed a contract to complete a cosplay for a specific convention, you are under no obligation to finish it for said convention. Even if you hyped up this cosplay to all of your friends, they will understand. I got about 75% done with a Monster Hunter cosplay. About two or so weeks before the convention, myself and my other two friends who were doing the costume group together decided it was just not worth it to put ourselves through that stress to finish those cosplays for the convention. We all understood. And we went to the convention and we had a great time cosplaying in another group that we already had cosplays for. I would much rather go to a convention well rested and excited to be there than angry about having to finish a cosplay in the hotel room. And there you have it, my eight tips for dealing with ConCrunch. Please feel free to leave a comment down below of your tips for dealing with ConCrunch. With that, my cosplay ConCrunching dudes, I bid you adieu.